Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet these really cute textured dungarees. So they have an opening at the front and then they have long legs. So these dungarees can be made in four different sizes. So in sizes 0 to 6 months, 6 to 12 months, 1 to 3 years and 3 to 5 years. And in this tutorial, we are going to go over the instructions for size 6 to 12 months. But if you'd like to learn how to make any of the different sizes, then they are all included on the written pattern. And I will leave a link to the written pattern in the description box below this video. So for these dungarees, you will need a 4mm crochet hook and fine weight yarn. So thank you very much for watching and please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos. So to begin your dungarees, you want to start off by making a slip knot. So to do a slip knot, take your yarn and take your finger and wrap the yarn around your finger once and then twice. Then take the first loop and pull it over the second loop and then take the second loop and pull it all the way over your finger. You then want to take your crochet hook, go in through this space and pull tight. And there we have a slip knot. And now once you have your slip knot, we are now going to make our foundation chain. And for this size, we are going to chain 120. So chain one, two, three, four, all the way up to 120. So there I have finished making my foundation chain and now before we move on to round one, we need to turn our foundation chain into a foundation ring. So what you want to do is you want to slowly go all the way down your chain, making sure that there are absolutely no twists in your chain. So go all the way down, down to the very first chain that you worked. And then when you get to the end here, and like I said, make sure that there are no twists, you want to go into the first chain that you worked. So go into the first chain and then work a slip stitch. So take your yarn and then you want to yarn over and go through both loops on your hook like that. So there we have worked a slip stitch into the first chain that we worked and we have turned our foundation chain into a foundation ring. And now before you begin round one, I would definitely recommend just quickly going back and double checking that you have no twists in your chain. And if you don't, we can move on to the first round. So to begin round one, you want to chain one and this chain one does not count as a stitch. And we are going to start off by working one single crochet into the first chain. So you want to go down into this first chain here as our chain one did not count as a stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and go through both loops on your hook. So there we have one single crochet into that chain and now into the next chain we're going to work one double crochet. So yarn over and go into this next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops and then yarn over and go through the final two loops on your hook. And now go into the next chain and do one single crochet and then work one double crochet into the next one. And we're just going to repeat this all the way along for round one. So we're going to do one single crochet into one chain and then one double crochet into the next, then a single crochet into the next and a double crochet into the next all the way around. So you want to do that all the way around your chain. So 
So I have finished working that all the way around for round one. So I did single crochet, double crochet, all the way around. And you should find that you finish off by working one double crochet into the last chain. So finish off with a double crochet. And then to finish round one, we are going to work a slip stitch into the first stitch that we worked. So here you want to go into the first single crochet that we worked at the beginning of the round and yarn over and go through both loops to work a slip stitch. So there we have finished round one and in this round you should have worked 120 stitches and I would definitely recommend that you quickly go back and double check that you do have 120, so 120 for this size and if you do then we can move on to round two. So to begin round two, you want to chain one and turn, and this chain one does not count as a stitch. So we are going to start off by working one single crochet into the first stitch. So go into the first stitch here and work one single crochet. And now you want to do one double crochet into the next stitch. and then do one single crochet into the next one and then one double crochet into the next and just keep repeating this all the way around for round two. So we're working one single crochet into one stitch and then one double crochet into the next stitch all the way around for round two. So it's the same thing as round one. And in this round, you should find that whenever you work a single crochet, that you're working it into a double crochet from last round. And that whenever you work a double crochet, that you're working it into a single crochet from last round. So here you can see we're going to work a single crochet and we're working this into a double crochet from last round. And now we're going to work a double crochet and we are working it into a single crochet from last round. So just continue to repeat that for round two. Single crochet, double crochet, single, double, single, double. So I have finished working that all the way around for round two and you should have found that at the end of that round you worked one double crochet into the last stitch. And now to finish off this round you want to work a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. And now at the end of round two you should find that you still have 120 stitches around. So then once you have done that, so once you have finished round two, we can now move on to the next round. So now for the next part of our dungarees, we are just going to repeat round two again and again and again. And for this size, we are going to repeat round two 40 times. So we are going to do 40 repeats of round two. And once you have done that, this is what you should have. So this is what your work should look like once you have worked 40 repeats of round two. So here we have our foundation chain going around the top and then we have rounds one and two. And then all of these rounds are just repeats of round two. And now if you would like to add more repeats, you can definitely do that. You can work as many as you like. So here I have my work and I have just placed it on top of a baby romper. So this is where our foundation chain or the top of our work is going to go. It's going to sit just underneath the arms, so about an inch underneath the arms. And then all of those rounds are going to make the body of the dungarees and they are going to go down until where the legs start. So you want to keep working rounds or repeats of round two until you reach where you want the legs to start. So I would recommend working 40 repeats of round two, but if you wanted to do more or less repeats, that's completely up to you. You could do 42, 44, 46 repeats. It's completely up to you. Just keep working round two. And you can go back in the tutorial and rewatch that round as many times as you need to. But for each round, you just want to chain one and turn and that chain one never counts as a stitch. And then you want to do single crochet, double crochet, single, double, single, double, all the way around, finishing off with a slip stitch into the first single crochet that you worked. And in each round, you should always have 120 stitches for this size. 
And then once you have done that, so once you have finished your repeats, we can now move on to the first leg. So we're now going to move on to round three, which is the first round of the first leg. So we are now on to round three, which is the first round of the leg. So we did round one, then two, and then we did all the repeats of round two, and now we're on to round three. So to begin this round, you want to chain one and turn, and that chain one did not count as a stitch. And we're going to start off by working one single crochet into the first stitch. So do one single crochet into the first one. And then you want to do one double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to keep repeating that. So keep repeating single crochet, double crochet, just as we have been doing lots and lots and lots of times before. But we are only going to work halfway around our round. So we are only going to do that for 60 stitches. So you want to do single crochet, double crochet until you have 60 stitches. So I'm going to do that again. So there I have four stitches and keep going until you have 60. Just coming to the end of round three, so I have worked 60 stitches around, so I am halfway around my round. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work a slip stitch into the first stitch that we worked. So you should find that you have finished off by working a double crochet. So your 60th stitch should be a double crochet. And now we're going to come back around here to the back and we're going to go in to the first single crochet of the round and work a slip stitch like that. And there we have worked the first round of our first leg. And now we can move on to round four. So to begin round four, you want to chain one and turn. And this chain one does not count as a stitch. So you can see we have our first leg forming here. So to begin this round, we are going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. So work one single crochet into the first stitch and then work a double crochet into the next and just keep repeating this all the way around. So keep working single crochet, double crochet all the way around for round four. And you should find that whenever you work a single crochet that you're working it into a double crochet from last round. And that whenever you work a double crochet that you're working it into a single crochet from last round. So keep repeating that for this round. So I'm just coming to the end of round four. So I have worked that all the way around and you should find that you work 60 stitches in this round. So you're just working around this first leg here and you should find that you finish off by working a double crochet into the last stitch. And then to finish off this round, work a slip stitch into the first double crochet that you work. So there we have finished round four and now for the rest of the length of this leg you just want to repeat round four, so the round that we just did. So you want to work lots and lots of repeats of round four and you can do as many repeats as you like. So you could work 40 repeats, 50 repeats, 30 repeats, it's completely up to you. So you could have the length of the legs of your dungarees as long as you have one. finished working all of those repeats for the length of the leg. So I ended up working 34 repeats in total, but like I said, you can do as many as you like. And my leg is now around about 18 centimeters long, but you can do yours um, to whatever length you want. And now once you have done that, so once you have finished all of your repeats of round four, we can now move on to round five, which is the first round of the border. So we are going to have a little border around the bottom of the leg and our border is going to be around about this big. So we are going to add a little bit more length to the leg. So we're going to start round five, which is the first round of the border. So to begin this round, you want to chain one and turn. And as usual, this chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to start off by working one double crochet into each of the first eight stitches. So we're going to do eight double crochets to start. So do one into the first stitch here. 
and then one into the next and keep going until you have eight. So there I have those double crochets and now over the next two stitches we are going to work a stitch called two double crochets together. So when we do two double crochets together we're working two double crochets, one into each stitch, but we're not going to complete either of them and then we're going to complete them both together at the same time. So we are turning two stitches into one. So you want to go into the first stitch, yarn over and go into the first stitch and start to work a double crochet. But you want to stop here, so normally we would yarn over and go through these two loops here. But you do not want to do that, you want to stop here and move on to the next one. So yarn over, go into the next stitch and start a second double crochet but you want to stop here and leave this double crochet incomplete as well. So now you should have two incomplete double crochets and three loops on your hook and you want to yarn over and go through all three. So there we have done two double crochets together. So there we have done eight double crochets and then two double crochets together over the next two stitches and you want to repeat this all the way around for round five. So we're going to do eight double crochets, two double crochets together, then eight more double crochets and then two double crochets together over the next two stitches all the way around. we have come to the end of round five and to finish that round you want to work a slip stitch into the first double crochet that you worked and now we can move on to the next round and for the next round you just want to do one double crochet into each stitch so we're going to start off by chaining one and turning so begin by doing a chain one and turn and this chain one does not count as a stitch and now we're just going to do one double crochet into each stitch around. So do double crochets all the way around. So there we have come to the end of that round and you should have worked 54 double crochets. And you want to finish off by working a slip stitch into the first double crochet that you worked. And now we can move on to round seven. And this round is another decrease round. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by working a chain one and turn. And this chain one does not count as a stitch. And now we're going to work seven double crochets or one double crochet into each of the first seven stitches. like that. So there we have seven double crochets and now you want to do two double crochets together over the next two stitches. So two double crochets together and we're just going to keep repeating this all the way around. You want to do seven double crochets and then two double crochets together, then seven double crochets and two double crochets together over the next two stitches all the way around. So it's very similar to round five, but in round five we did eight double crochets and then two double crochets together. And in round seven we're doing seven double crochets and two double crochets together all the way around. So we have finished working that all the way around and you want to finish off by working a slip stitch into the first double crochet that you worked. So this is what our border should look like. So we have just plain double crochet around the bottom here and we are decreasing to make the legs not be so flared and to come in a little bit around the ankles. 
So there we have finished round seven, and now round eight is just another round of plain double crochet. So it's the exact same thing as round six. You want to chain one and turn and work one double crochet into each stitch, and then finish off by working a slip stitch into the first double crochet that you worked. So do that for round eight, another round of one double crochet into each stitch. Finished working that all the way around for round eight. So that was just a round of plain double crochet. And now when I came to the end of that round, I then went ahead and worked three repeats of round eight. So here you can see I have the border of the leg. I have rounds five, six, seven, eight, and then I have three repeats of round eight. And now these repeats are completely optional. And the reason that I have worked mine is because I want to fold the bottom of my leg over to create a cuff. So I like the way that this looks where it's folded over, but this is completely optional. So if you do want to fold the bottom of the leg over to create a cuff, then at the end of round eight, you want to go ahead and work three repeats of that round. So you'll have rounds five, six, seven, eight, and then three repeats of round eight. But if you don't want to fold the bottom of the leg up, then I would just stop at the end of round eight. So do not work those three repeats. So then once you have done that, so once you have finished working the leg, whether you worked the repeats or not, you now want to go ahead and fasten off. So we have finished the first leg. So pull your yarn out and your hook and cut your yarn, leaving a nice long tail to weave in later. And now we can move on to round nine, which is the first round of the other leg. There we have finished our first leg and we are now going to move on to the first round of the second leg. So round nine is the first round of the second leg. And you want to start off with the back of your work facing you. So here we have the seam. You can sort of see the seam going down the back here, but your end from your slip knot at the very beginning should be up here. So you want to start off with the back of your work facing you. And what's really important is that you have the wrong side of this last round here facing you. So we have the wrong side or the back of this very last round around the bottom here facing you. So we have the back of our work facing us with the wrong side of this last repeat of round two facing us. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach our yarn into any double crochet along the back here that is towards the center of our work. So if we have a look at our work, we have single crochets and double crochets, single, double, single, double, and we're going to attach our yarn into any double crochet towards the center. So I'm going to pick this double crochet here, so it's the double crochet really close to the center, and I'm going to go into this stitch, take my yarn, place it over the end of my hook, pull it through, and chain one to secure it. So there I have attached my yarn into that stitch and now we can move on to round nine. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by going down into this stitch, so into that stitch that you have just attached your yarn into, so that should be a double crochet and work one single crochet. And now we're going to go into the next stitch. So this stitch here should be a single crochet and we're going to work a double crochet. And you want to keep repeating that all the way along until you reach the last stitch here that has not been worked into. So as I attached my yarn really close to the center, I have already reached that. So I have already worked into that last stitch that hasn't already been worked into for the other leg. But if you attach your yarn further back here, then just keep repeating single crochet, double crochet until you have worked into that last stitch that hasn't already been worked into along the back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work over to the front. So turn your work over to the front like this. And we are going to work one single crochet 
into the first stitch that hasn't already been worked into along the front. So here we have that stitch here. So you can see this stitch has already been worked into for the other leg. So here we have our first empty stitch and you should find that that is a double crochet and we're going to go into this stitch. So go into that double crochet, pull your work nice and tight and work a single crochet. And now we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch and you should find that you're working that into a single crochet and then work a single into the next and then a double into the next and keep repeating that all the way around. Keep repeating single crochet, double crochet all the way around until you reach where you started. So I have finished working that all the way around for round nine and you should find that you finish off by working a double crochet into this last stitch here. And now at the end of this round, you should have worked 60 stitches. And I would definitely recommend that you just quickly go back and double check that you do have 60. So for this size, that's the number that you should have. And if you do, you want to finish off by working a slip stitch into the first single crochet that we worked. So the first single crochet of the round. So there we have finished round nine, which is the first round of our second leg. And now for the rest of this leg, you just want to do the exact same thing as the other leg. So for round 10, we're just going to repeat round four, and then you want to do all of your repeats. So all of these rounds exactly the same as the other leg. And then you want to do the exact same thing for the other leg as you did for this one for the border. And now if you have the written pattern, all of those rounds and those instructions are written down really clearly on there or you can go back in the tutorial and re-watch those rounds as many times as you need to. So you want to do the exact same for this leg as you did for this leg here. So for round 10, we're doing the same thing as we did for round four, and then we're doing our, all of our repeats and then our border in the exact same way. So go ahead and work that for the second leg ahead and finished that second leg so this is what your work should look like now we have two identical legs and now we can move on to the top of our dungarees and we are going to start off with the front of the top of the dungarees and the front is worked in two parts so we are going to have two halves to the front of the dungarees so you want to start off by laying your dungarees flat so you want the front facing you so you shouldn't have a seam here so you want the front facing you and you want to lay it flat and it's really important to make sure that round one from the very very start so round one here that the wrong side of this round is facing you so you need to make sure that you have the wrong side of round one of our dungarees or the body of our dungarees facing you so like I said lay your work flat with the front facing you with the wrong side of round one facing out and we are going to attach our yarn into the fifth stitch from the far right hand side so if you have a look at your work here make sure you lay it flat you want to count in five stitches so I'm going to count in one two three four five and we are going to attach our yarn into this stitch and I have placed a stitch marker into this stitch here so if you want to you can place a stitch marker into that stitch like I have done and then lay your work flat and just check that you are definitely counting in five stitches from the far right hand side and like I said we're going to attach our yarn into that stitch so I'm going to remove my stitch marker and insert my hook into that stitch and we are going to take our yarn place it over the end of our hook and pull it through and this can be a bit fiddly and now chain one to secure it so chain one to secure it and when you lay your work flat again you should now have four stitches left empty on that right hand side and what we're going to do is we're now going to work a single crochet into that first stitch so work a single crochet 
into that first stitch there. So work a single crochet into that first stitch there that you just attached your yarn into. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. So go into the next stitch here and work one double crochet. And we're going to repeat this 12 more times. So we have done a single crochet into one stitch and a double crochet into the next. And we're going to repeat that 12 more times. So then you will have 13 sets of those stitches in total. And you should have worked 26 stitches. And that is going to be round one of the first half of the front of our dungarees. So we have done single crochet, double crochet. So now we're going to do our first repeat. So do a single crochet into the next stitch. And we are working into the foundation chain from the very start of our dungarees. So it can be a little bit tricky to work into those stitches. So there we have done a single crochet into the next stitch. And now we're going to do a double crochet into the next and keep going until you have done that 13 times in total and you have worked 26 stitches. So I have finished working those stitches and like I said at the end of that round you should have worked 26 stitches and you should find that that takes you to halfway across the top here. So this last stitch should now line up with the middle of your work down the bottom here. So there we have finished round one of the first side of the top of the front of our dungarees and now we can move on to round two. So to begin this round you want to chain one and turn and this chain one does not count as a stitch and for this round we are going to work a single crochet into the first stitch. So you should find, have found that at the end of round one you finished off by working a double crochet. So when we do our single crochet at the start of round two we are working that into the last double crochet from last round. And now we're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch and then a double crochet into the next one. And you want to keep repeating that all the way around for round two. And as with the rest of our dungarees, whenever you work a single crochet, you should find that you work it into a double crochet from last round. And that whenever you work a double crochet, you should find that you're working it into a single crochet from last round. So keep repeating single, double, single, double all the way along. So there I have finished working that all the way along for round two and you should find that you finish off by working a double crochet into the last stitch at the end and at the end of that round you should still have 26 stitches. So now for the rest of this part of our dungarees we are just going to keep repeating round two so the round that we just did so you can do as many repeats as you like but you want to keep repeating that round until you reach where you want the neckline to be so where you want the top of the dungarees to finish so if i have a look at this um romper here which is what i am basing the size of my dungarees off of, I'm going to keep repeating round two until I reach around about here, which is where I want the neckline to be. So go ahead and keep repeating that round. So I have finished working all of those repeats of round two and I ended up working 14 repeats. So I have rounds one and two and then 14 repeats of round two. And I feel like this is the right length for my romper. But like I said, you can do as many rounds as you like. So then once you have finished working those repeats, we can now move on and make the strap. So what we're going to do for the strap is we're going to chain one and turn. And this chain one does not count as a stitch as usual. And we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. And a double crochet into the next. 
and I'm going to repeat that four more times. So I'm going to do a single crochet, double crochet, four more times, and then my strap will be 10 stitches wide. So like that, so I have worked those repeats and like I said, my strap is 10 stitches wide, but you can make yours as wide as you like. So you can have 12 stitches, eight stitches, it's completely up to you, as long as it is a multiple of two. So I have worked 10 stitches for my first round of the strap. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn. And we're just going to work single crochet, double crochet all the way along for round two. So like that, so there we have finished round two. So for that round, you just want to chain one and turn and then continue our pattern of single crochet, double crochet all the way along, just as we have done throughout the entire pattern. And you just want to repeat that round, so round two, again and again and again for the strap. So you can do as many rounds as you like. So I think I'll probably do around about five or six, but you can do as many as you like. And if you want your dungarees to have a higher neckline, then work less repeats. And if you want a lower neckline and you want it to be a bit roomier, then work more repeats. So go ahead and work repeats of round two for the rest of this strap. So I have finished working those repeats for the strap and I ended up working five repeats and this is the length that I want but you can do as many as you like. So then once you have finished your final repeat, you now want to fasten off and when you fasten off, make sure that you leave a nice long tail end as you can use this end to sew the straps together once we have completed the back. So there I have finished that first half of the front or the top of the front of our dungarees. And now we can move on to the second half. So this second half is very, very similar to this first half that we did. We're going to start off by attaching our yarn into this stitch here. So here was the last stitch that we worked into for the first half of the front. And we're going to attach our yarn into this next stitch. So the first empty stitch after this one that has already been worked into. So insert your hook into that stitch and attach your yarn. So like that, attach your yarn. And now we're just going to work this half the exact same as the other half. So for round one, we are going to work 26 stitches. So we're going to do a single crochet down into this first stitch that we just attached our yarn into. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the next one. And we're going to keep doing that until you have 26 stitches in total. So I have finished working that all the way along for round one and you should finish off by working a double crochet. So at the, in that round you should work 26 stitches and when you get to the end here you should find that you have four stitches left empty on this side. So we have four chains one, two, three, four, which are left empty on the front, on this side of the front. And then we have four left empty over here and over, over here, which is where the arms are going to go. So there we have completed round one of the second half of the top of the front. And now for the rest of this side, we're just going to do the exact same thing as this side. So you're going to do round two, which is chain one and turn, and then single crochet, double crochet, 
all the way along with 26 stitches in that round and then you want to work the same number of repeats for this side as you did for this side and then you want to do the strap in the exact same way do the same number of stitches for the width and the same number of rounds for the length so go ahead and make that side in the same way as you made the other side and obviously for this side your strap will need to be over on this side of the romper so you will need to fasten off your yarn and then reattach it 10 stitches from the left hand side and then work your strap in the same way so go ahead and do that for this side of the front so once you have finished working that section, so that is the other half of the top of the front, we have finished the top of the front of our dungarees and we can move on to the top of the back. So the back is super simple, so I'm not going to show you how to do it, I'm just going to explain what you need to do. So what you want to do is you want to start off with the first stitch here that has not been worked into for the top of the front. So go to the far left hand side and you want to start off with the first stitch that has been left empty. So the first stitch that has not already been worked into for the front. And you want to count along nine stitches. So for this size, we're going to count along nine stitches. So you'll count one, two, three, four, all the way around to nine and that will take you to the stitch that you need to start the back section in. So you need to go ahead and attach your yarn into that stitch, so into the ninth one along and then we're going to do a single crochet down into that stitch, so the stitch that you attached your yarn into and then work a double crochet into the next one and you want to keep repeating that all the way along until you have 52 stitches. So keep doing single double, single double all the way along until you have 52 stitches for the back and once you have done that for round one you should find that you have eight stitches skipped underneath each arm. So you'll have eight stitches here in between the front and the back and then you'll have eight stitches here left empty between the front and the back on this side as well. And when you are working that round, so round one of the top of the back, as with the front you need to make sure that the wrong side of round one of the body is facing you. So make sure that round one of the body, the wrong side of that round is facing you and then go ahead and work round one of the top of the back. So you should have 52 stitches in total for that round working single double, single double all the way along and then for round two you want to do the exact same as we did for the top of the front, chain one and turn and then work single crochet, double crochet all the way along. So do that all the way along for round two and you should still have 52 stitches in that round. And then you want to keep repeating that round. So keep repeating round two until your work is the same height as the front section. So until you have worked the same number of repeats as you did for the front. So keep working chain one and turn, then work a single crochet into the first stitch and a double crochet into the next and then keep repeating that all the way along. And like I said, just keep repeating those rounds until you have the length that you want. And then you want to go ahead and add straps to the back section, so the, in the exact same way as we did for the front. So you want to make sure that they're the same width and height as you did for the front section. And then once you have done that, you will have crocheted all of the pieces of your dungarees. So we have the body, the legs, the front, the back, all four straps. And now we can move on to sewing it together and adding the ball. So we are now going to move on to sewing the top of our dungarees together. So we are going to sew across the top of each strap. So we're going to sew along this section here and then along this section here using the whip stitch. So you want to take a yarn needle like this and I have one of the ones with the big loop at the end and this makes it a lot easier. And then you want to take your ends that you left when you made the straps. So you should have left long ends and that way you can use these to sew the top of the straps together. And as I have already sewn mine together along the top here, I have made a little sample strap. So two little sample straps to show you how to do the whip stitch. So what you want to do is you want to thread your needle with one of the ends that you left when you fastened off. And then you want to take the two halves of the strap, so the front and the back, and you want to line them up perfectly, so line up your stitches. And then you want to go in through to the other side like this, 
and go through. And then with the whip stitch, you always come back around to the same side. So you always come back around to the same side here and go in through both stitches. So the same stitch on both sides and go through. And then you want to come back around to the same side here and go through both stitches and go through and kind of pull it tight once you have gone through like that and work this all the way along to sew up the top of the strap. So this is how you work the whip stitch to sew it up. So like that, so I work that all the way along. So you want to sew up the top of the strap here and then you want to do the exact same thing for the other side. And then once you have done that, we will have sewn our dungarees together. And now the final thing that we need to do is add the border. And the border is really, really simple. I just decided to do a plain single crochet border but you can do whatever border you like. And I worked the border around each arm here and then also around the neckline. So what you want to do for the arms is you want to begin by attaching your yarn somewhere in the back here. So I actually attached mine right down here at the bottom. And then you want to attach your yarn into that stitch, like I said, and then simply just work single crochets evenly all the way around. So you want to work a single crochet into the stitch that you attach your yarn into and then work single crochets up here evenly into the side of the stitches all the way around. So work single crochets evenly into the side of the stitches all the way around and then work a slip stitch into the first single crochet that you worked. And to make it easier when crocheting the borders, I would definitely recommend going down to a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and that just makes it a lot easier to get into the side of the stitches. So you want to do that all the way around this arm here and then this arm on this side. And then I did the exact same thing around the neckline. So you want to start down at the bottom here on the left. So begin by attaching your yarn into the very bottom of the left side of the opening here. And then I just worked single crochets evenly up this side here and then all the way around the neckline. I worked single crochets all the way evenly around the neckline. And then when I got to the top of the right hand side here, I stopped and then I went ahead and added my buttons to the left hand side. So when I got to the top of the right hand side, I stopped and then I took my buttons and I securely attached them to the left hand side here. And that way when I continue to work my border down the right hand side, I would know where to add my button loops. So what I did when I came back down the right hand side here is I worked single crochets evenly down this side, but whenever I was opposite a button, I chained four and skipped the next stitch. And that gave me a buttonhole. So I just added two buttons and they are quite large, so I needed to chain four. But if you were using a smaller button, you may only need to chain two or chain three. Or if you're using an even larger button, you ne may need to chain five. So I just chained four, skipped the next stitch when I was opposite a button and worked single crochets back down. And then when I reached the very bottom of the opening here, I fastened off. And there we have finished our dungarees. So now you want to go ahead and weave all of your ends nice and securely into the inside. So then once all of the ends have been weaved in nice and securely, and you need to make sure that you add your buttons really securely if this is for a baby, you then want to go ahead and sew up the hole which is down the bottom here. So the hole here, you will need to sew this up. So then once you have done that, so you have weaved all of the ends in, you have sewn the buttons on and you have sewn up the hole at the bottom, we have finished. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it easy to follow. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos. And in the description box below this video, I will leave a link to where you can find the written pattern for these dungarees. These dungarees can be made in four different sizes. So zero to six months, six to 12 months, one to three years and three to five years. And all of the different sizes are included on the written pattern. And in the description box, I will also leave a link to where you can find my Twitter and Instagram accounts. So I always like to post updates and pictures on there, especially Instagram. And I would love to see photos of your crochet work on there as well. And thank you again for watching. Bye.